Hey, what's going on everybody out there in the world of YouTube? Hey, real quick before the video, we get to the topic of this video, Revzilla or Cycle Gear, whatever you want to call them. Uh, it's got a big event coming up soon at Texas Motor Speedway. I'm going to be there. So a bunch of other of uh, us moto dudes on the interwebs. There'll be all kinds of other stuff too. You don't have to just see me. There's a little bit of this and that going on there. There'll be a link in the description. Please go check it out. Come say what's up. Let's make this a good event because the progressive motorcycle show that comes to Dallas been pretty lame the last few also real quick there is a better version of this video over on patreon it's longer and came out earlier okay i don't like to make a whole lot of these technical videos about camera equipment and whatnot and uh you know here's the thing i'm probably a rider and, and a wrenching guy much more than i am like a mediographer person i've painstakingly learned enough of it to do my job and you want to capture your adventures you want to get the good shots and so over the years i have grown my equipment for filming videos i've also upgraded it of course oftentimes when i go out for rides i carry my little mini dslr in my backpack or one of my other bags it's not really a big deal. I may carry some uh, extra chargers and batteries and whatnot. You see, recently there's been an issue with that. You see, this adventure bike stuff kind of throws it all on its head. Sure, I add more storage to the bike and I've got more room to take things with me. However, I also need to take everything I need to eat with, like a kitchen, a bedroom, clothing. The truth is space is a premium. Stuffing a bunch of camera equipment in the bike and taking it with me, it's not an ideal situation. All the camera equipment I bring with me, it needs to be fairly shockproof, dustproof, probably a bit water resistant, if not completely. So if I do bring a nice camera with me, I need to put in some sort of shockproof sealed case which that takes up even more room. And another problem too is all this extra cameras I take with me, they all have their own charger and batteries typically. I don't want to limit my videographer abilities. You know, I, I like getting my 360 shots, my flyby shots, and I like to have a good camera to talk to when I get where I'm going. So I've been trying different things on these different trips I've been on, and I think I've come up with something that will actually work pretty good, which is what you're seeing me on right now. It's an Insta 361R. Now, I know this whole video is built up to, you're just using all the different lenses that the camera comes with. I know, but just hear me out because I didn't give this camera a lot of credit when it first came out. I think I was still dealing with sort of like the pre-production software and uh, it was dumb, it was on me. I should have tried messing with this camera a little more because uh, it's turned out to work pretty good. If you're unaware of these cameras, they're basically a GoPro-ish style camera with a handful of different ways you can sort of modulate it. So you can switch this lens uh, for the 360, for the 4K. See how I've got this aimed at me right now? I'm doing a little, we'll do a little vlog mode like that. Yeah, I'll check this out. Hey, look at me now, I'm filming everything like this. What I've been doing is just kind of quick saving some of my favorite settings in here. You can shut these up. For the most part, I leave it in auto because I'm just a dingus. But I did find putting the color in the log and then adding a LUT to it later is a little bit better. One of the weak points I have found with this camera is that you have it like one of these standards or vivid modes. There's some colors, especially something with like browns that don't do super well. I've just gotten to the point where this last video I went out, I didn't bring anything but the 1R camera with me. I still was messing with some settings in there, so it's not, what? It's not perfect. I think I've got it all figured out now. <laughs> you'll see from this video, which you'll have noticed at this point, it's all been shot using the 1R. Your 360 camera that can capture all your cool flyby shots. It disappears its own selfie stick, so that's where you get in that cool shot where you don't see. It looks like a camera car is following me or something. If you're somewhere where you can see the stars, you can set up a star lapse overnight. I really like doing it with the 360 camera because you can tilt the footage as it's rolling through there. I, I think everyone pretty much loves that shot. There's all kinds of options with the 360 lens. I had so many different ways you can mount it and set it up. I often put it in places a little more dangerous than you should. I, I know it's got lens, lens protectors on there, but I, uh, you know, it's got lens protectors. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not that worried about it. <laughs> My favorite's honestly just anytime you set that camera up, you drive past it. You do have to go back and get it, of course, you know, but. It looks cool, it looks like it did something neat. The 4K lens can do all your normal action camera stuff, just like any kind of GoPro's done in the past. As far as how this one compares to the newest GoPro, I don't know, I had a seven. There's some some things that may be better in one than the other, but they're, pre they're both pretty good. And then finally, of course, was what I'm doing right now is using this thing called the one inch mod, which can film in some pretty high resolutions. Five point, what, 3K? in its highest settings, and actually works pretty good in low light. Now I'll tell you guys the truth with these things, I've got no reason to BS you. I've been critical of these guys before, and these cameras, they're not completely perfect. There's still some things I'm not thrilled with them, but this actually works pretty good. I mean, is this a replacement for a DSLR? 
or even a mini DSLR or a little point shoot? Probably not. Not completely. But is it practical enough to make me okay with that? I think so. I mean, I could drop this camera. I've done it. I don't feel like I'm lacking. In fact, I think I've expanded a lot of my abilities as a video filmographer moto guy with this setup. And it's rugged. It's small. A couple selfie sticks. This guy's kind of cool. One of those little tripods. A few other little mounts here and there. And I think you can pretty well capture your experience. Since I'm only carrying the one camera, I don't have to carry six different types of battery chargers with me. Check it out. I got two fully charged ones right here. I either have that hooked up to my bike when I got the tank bag up here, which has my 12 volt accessories, or I just carry a little battery like that with me. No big deal. That thing will charge these batteries. God, I don't even know how many times. Mini. Charging this one back up now. Look at that little compact system. You could stuff that in many places. The only real camera I think you can compare this to and throw it up against, obviously I don't have the newest GoPro. I do think the newest one's got some pretty high level record modes, although they're stuck with the lens they have. I don't know if you could do everything with one like you can with the Insta. Maybe it would work well, I don't know, honestly. What I can tell you is that I was initially unimpressed with this camera and they've continued to do software updates and development on it. They haven't just given up on it and they've got it now where I really, really like it. And I can tell you over the many GoPros I've owned over the years, you typically get the way it comes when it first comes out. It's usually a couple features that don't work. You get the software update. Usually there's a feature or two that gets screwed up and they don't, they just, they don't, I don't feel like GoPro supports their product very well once it hits the market. Wow, look at this. All right, that's probably about as far as I can go, but wow. With GoPro, it's, they come out with a camera, whether it's wrong or right, they just start focusing on the next one, you know? Gotta bang out a new one every year. You gotta bang out a new hyperly edited video <laughs> with shots that are questionably shot on a GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look, this road collapsed. That's what this is right here. Look at that. This is the other side of it. That's not an Instagram picture that I don't know what is. Ah, oh, that looks so good. To be fair, it still makes a lot of sense sometimes just to use this camera. It's pretty good. <laughs> I gotta do it, man. I gotta do it. <laughs> there was a good place down. Where's the place I don't roll my knee and end up stuck out here? Need some found footage. <laughs> Blair, Blair Witch Project, except not all shaky due to the incredible stability of the Insta camera. <laughs> What's going on, bike? <laughs> See, the, this, is my, this is my other videographer right here. See wherever I go? Following me. I'm out here by myself, man. Even when I got people with me, I, a lot of times I'm the guy. I gotta, I gotta do what I gotta do, you know? See, a real venture bike would be about, I don't know. Probably an extra 50 to 100 pounds. Not this little guy. <laughs> now obviously I got more than one of these cameras. <laughs> That's because Insta sent me a few of them at this point. But most of the time I'm using one at a time. Right now, right now I'm, I'm flexing a little on y'all. I'm using two at once. I haven't tested every camera out. And I'm sure uh, if you think uh, another camera could do all this better, then you know, uh, comment that below. Let's, uh, I, I mean, I'm interested if there's something in that, that works better than this. I'm not, I'm not brand loyal. I'm what works the best loyal. <laughs> and for me, for myself in my personal self, this setup works the best. The type of riding that I want to do though, when I go out and ride like this, I don't want to like limit that because of the camera equipment I brought with me or the difficulty of setting it up to get a shot. Oh, look at these scenicness here. Look at the scenicness. Enjoy it on the camera here. <laughs> I'd be surprised if this light changes for me. We'll see. I'll give it an honest shot. Chase on two wheels was right there. You just see that? Chase on two wheels was driving that, that Ford Ranger. Pull up right there. Oh, I'm not heavy enough. It won't trip for me. <laughs> there it goes. See, you pulled up. It went. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, 
Now there is one thing I haven't told you about this setup, which is how I'm capturing my audio right now. When I'm riding around in my backpack, I have a Zoom, Zoom H2N voice recorder going uh, up into my helmet with a purple panda mic. I have just given up on trying to capture decent audio with these action cameras. I know it sounds like a pain, but here's the deal. I put all this stuff into an editor anyway and edit it. And uh, this Zoom voice recorder, I put two AA batteries in it. It'll last for weeks. I put a 32 gigabyte card in there, put it in the highest recording settings, 220 something hours of record time. I have literally left my house, drove for hours with it just running. And you know what I do when I turn these on? I give a nice big, oh! I look for that little audio line, and I go, woo! Sync them up. Woo, that wind is rough. I, I hope that's not just blasting the mic. Put my hand here. Does that help? Does that help with my hand right here? I have no idea. I think though for the indie all adventurers out there, this may be something you to consider, or just in general, if you're trying to simplify your setup. If you in the North Texas area, or you want to come out to it, please come check out that event. I'm gonna be out there. I think I'm gonna bring this bike. I asked them if they want me to bring the bike and they're like, heck yeah, I mean, you guys wanna see, if you wanna see this thing in person, I'll have this dirty bike out there. I'll try to clean it up before I go. <laughs> After I upload this video for you guys on Patreon, you know, I always just sit over there in Discord hanging out uh, to say what's up to you guys. So come over there and say hi. <laughs>